Jesus is alive. He rose from the dead. Never to die again. He ascended to heaven and is coming back for you. Lift your hands and give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration. He lives forever. Worship him. Adore him. He deserves your worship. Give him glory, give him honor. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. Ramokushindra, Hititere Makakanko Romokushindi, Hirundre Kerunde Remokurunde Remokushiki Remakatani Kerimokushindi. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. He's alive. Amen. He's alive. Jesus is alive. Forever he's alive. Amen. He's alive. Save 
with your ease and life forever is alive Alive, amen. Is alive. A healer is alive forever. Is alive, amen. Alive, amen. Is alive. A deliverer is alive forever. Is alive, amen. Alive, amen. Is alive. A king is alive forever. Is alive, amen. Lord, is Lord, Amen. He has risen from the dead. Is Lord, every knee must bow, every tongue confess. That Jesus Christ is Lord, is Lord, is Lord, is Lord, is Lord, is Lord, I know 
Alléluia. Is Lord Jesus Christ is Lord Jesus Christ is Lord Amen Every knee must bow Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Alleluia. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. King of kings and Lord of lords, the father of all fathers, the original I am, the unchangeable changer, the one who was dead but is alive and is alive forevermore, the controller of resurrection power, the one who speaks and it is done. The one who said, let there be light, and there was light. The one who makes a way in the Red Sea. The one who can pull down the wall of Jericho with just a shout. Glory be to your holy name. Thank you for another Easter season. Thank you for a special Holy Ghost for your children. Thank you for what you have done in the past. Thank you for what you are going to do tonight. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Right now, Father, let the fire come down. Every yoke in the life of your children consumed by fire. Every prayer that shall be prayed here tonight, Father, answer by fire. At the end of it all, let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. Shake hands with one or two people and tell them Jesus is alive. And then you may please be seated with the exception of those who are born in the month of April.
If you are born in the month of April, let me hear you shout hallelujah. <laughs> my Father and my God, we are committing your children born in the month of April into your hands. April is the fourth month of the year, and four stands for the four corners of the earth. And so, Daddy, I'm decreeing concerning this your children born in the month of April. Send help to them from the east. Send help to them from the west. Send help to them from the north. Send help to them from the south. From all the corners of the world, Father, send help to your children. Give them a new beginning of multiple joys, multiple success, multiple promotions, multiple testimonies, multiple anointing. Let them be able to serve you sevenfold so that your name will be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Well, children of April, shout another hallelujah. And then you may please be seated for the May Holy Ghost service if the Lord tarries. We'll be talking on from the mountain top part four, and the theme will be in partnership with fire. In partnership with fire. When the Almighty God told Moses in Exodus chapter three that he wanted them to go to Egypt and bring forth his people. And Moses said, ah, who am I to go? <laughs> there is a fellow there waiting to take off my head. The Almighty God said, don't worry, I will go with you. Beginning from this moment onward, everywhere you go, the fire of the Almighty God will surround you. Uh, we will be brief tonight because we are dealing with children and we still have quite a bit to do before we close. And we don't want all of them to be asleep before we get to anointing them with oil. We're talking about shielded by fire. Zechariah chapter 2, verse 5. Oh, by the way, as you are opening your Bibles, the children have been extremely wonderful this evening, don't you think so? From the Bible recitation, the singing, the dancing, the drama, the preaching, even the taking of the offering, the announcement. I mean, you, you, you like the phonetics, don't you? <laughs> I'm sure you would love to speak like they speak. Glory be to God, man. Let somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> As for the mass choir, the, they just took this thing to a higher level. By the time they got to their song number three, I would have jumped up to dance with them. But uh, Wisdom said that uh, <laughs> I, I should dance on my seat. And then they came to their song number four. Uh, glory be to God. Let's give God a big round of applause for all the children and the, and the mass choir. 
And I don't know if you notice that uh, for quite a while now, the sound is very good. Everything is clear. I think we should give God a big round of applause for the engineers. They're doing a very nice job, very nice job. Oh, glory be to God. Well, Zechariah chapter 2, verse 5. Zechariah chapter 2, verse 5. For I, saith the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about, and will be the glory in the midst of her. The God I serve we surround you and your children with wall of fire. I know this is a, a special Holy Ghost service for children. But then we are all children. We are all babies in the hand of God. We are babies in the hand of the one who is older than the mountains. According to him, in Isaiah chapter 65, verse 20, Isaiah 65, verse 20, he calls someone who is a hundred years old an infant. So if you are not at least a hundred years old, as far as God is concerned, you are an infant. So how many babies in the hand of the Most High God are here tonight? Let me hear a baby like Hallelujah. Now, God has always been in the business of shielding. By the time you read Genesis chapter 3, from verse 1 to 7, Genesis 3, from verse 1 to 7. When Adam and Eve sinned and the glory of God departed from them and they suddenly realized that they were naked, they tried to cover their shame with leaves. But the Almighty God came down and said, well, let me cover your shame. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 21, Genesis 3, 21, he covered their shame with the skin of animals. In Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 5, Deuteronomy 29, verse 5, the Bible tells us that while the children of Israel were passing through the wilderness, the 40 years they were there, the Almighty God saw to it that their clothes didn't wear out. Their shoes didn't wear out. He was determined to cover their shame. In Joel chapter 2, from verse 26 to 27, Joel chapter 2, from verse 26 to 27, the Almighty God promised again and again he said, my people shall not be ashamed. So I decree in the name that's above every other name, whatever may be causing you shame, God will take it away today. That's why the Bible says in Colossians chapter 1 verse 27, Colossians 1 verse 27, it says, Christ in you the hope of glory, not the hope of shame. If there's anything in your future waiting to shame you, the fire of God will consume it tonight. Now, he uses various means to shield his people. One of the major ways he shielded the people in the past is by his blood. In Exodus chapter 12, verse 13, Exodus 12, verse 13, he said, 
when I see the blood, I will pass over you. When there is a plague, he uses his blood to shield his people. But for the special shielding of God, during the coronavirus, many of us will not be here today because in the advanced nations of the world where they had all the doctors, all the medicine, etc., etc., about 4,000 people may die in one day. But do you know that in the two years of the coronavirus in Nigeria, the total number of people who died were less, was less than 4,000. Because somehow God had our cry. He covered us in his blood. Death came and passed over us. All of you who survived coronavirus, let me hear you shout hallelujah. In Exodus chapter 12, from verse 10 to 11, Exodus chapter 12, from verse 10 to 11, the Bible said, they overcame the devil by the blood of the Lamb. That is, when you are covered in the blood, you are shielded from the attacks of the devil. So I'm praying for all my children. From this moment on, the blood of Jesus Christ will cover you. He shields people through his blood. He shields you from unanswered prayers. You see, the Bible says in Isaiah 59, verses 1 and 2, Isaiah 59, verses 1 and 2, he said that, God, God's hand is not shortened that he cannot see. His ears are not heavy that he cannot hear. But your sin, your iniquities may separate between you and him that, is who hear, that he won't hear you. But thank God for 1 John chapter 1 verse 7. 1 John chapter 1 verse 7. He said the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sins. So in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, whatever it is that has been hindering your prayers, the blood of Jesus Christ will wipe it away tonight. He shields you through his blood now from hindered access to him. Many a times you, you want access to God. And according to the word of God, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19, Hebrews 10, verse 19, because of the blood of the Lamb, we have boldness now to enter into the holiest. Nobody can stop us when we want to see God because of the Lamb. I see, remember the first time that I went to see a head of state. And I went at his invitation. I passed through gate number one. Where, where are you going? I, I, the president asked me to come and see him. They check their records. Oh yes, oh yes. So they passed me. Then I got to gate number two. At gate number two, oh, the checking was thorough. Then I got to gate number three. And the people at gate number three can see me going through what I went through in gate number two. And they conducted their own security check. And then I got to gate number four. And then I got to gate number five. I said, oh God, thank you, I have Jesus. 
Thank you that any time I want to see the Almighty God, all I have to say is, in the name of Jesus. Let me hear somebody shout, Jesus. And now the Bible says, because of the blood, nobody can hinder you from accessing God. He shields you from every hindrance that can prevent you from seeing the Almighty God. Somebody is going to see God tonight. If you are the one, let me hear your amen loud and clear. And one other way he shields people is by his word. In Psalm 107 verse 20, Psalm 107 verse 20, he says, He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. That is, when the enemy wants to destroy you, he will send his word. And the word will shield you from destructions. He shields you from barrenness through his word because he says in Exodus chapter 23 verse 26 Exodus 23 verse 26 he says, there shall not be barren there shall be none barren in my land so I'm, I'm decreeing right now those of you who are wishing that your own children are here tonight next year your children will be here Through his word, he shields you from poverty. Because it is written, though there will always be the poor in the land, he didn't say you'll be one of them. He said in his word, in 3 John verse 2, 3 John verse 2, he said, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. In other words, it doesn't matter how the situation may appear to you right now. In the name that's above every other name, and according to the word of God, you will not die poor. And then, he shields against enemies by his name. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10. Proverbs 18, verse 10. It says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. In other words, if enemies are pursuing you and you see this strong tower, call the name of the Lord, you will run into it and the enemy will not be able to touch you. He says in uh, Psalm 27, from verse 1 to 3, Psalm 27, from verse 1 to 3, he said, if they're running after you, and they're about to catch up with you, he said, they will stumble and fall. That's what he said. And in Philippians chapter 2, from verse 9 to 11, Philippians 2, from verse 9 to 11, he said that, at the name of Jesus, every name must bow. And so I decree today, if there are enemies who have been pursuing you up to this moment, in the next moment when you shout the name of Jesus, they will turn back from you. So let me hear you shout Jesus now. I can tell you many stories on that name alone, but I want to be brief, like I said. Uh, so maybe we'll leave storytelling till next time. And come to the real one, shielding you by fire. 
<sighs> There's something you need to know about God. And that is, he himself is called the consuming fire. According to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29. Hebrews 12, verse 29. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. Well, Daddy asked me to tell someone <laughs> that the joyful noise of children will never cease in your home. Let me pause briefly and thank God for the testimonies of tonight. You know, I heard that someone said that we fake miracles here. How can you fake the testimonies we have tonight? A woman made up her mind. God, what I want. Three boys and one girl. Now, what method will Pasuadeboye use to arrange that kind of miracle? Only God can do that. Exactly what she wanted was exactly what she got. I decree tonight, whether the mockers like it or not, you will get your miracles. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 29 says, Our God is a consuming fire. You see, there's something you need to note about fire. And that is, whenever fire touches anything, it changes that thing to itself. If it touches cloth, the cloth will begin to burn. They will say the cloth catches fire. If it, if it touches wood, it will turn the wood to fire. That's why they will say the wood is firewood. Anything that it cannot turn to itself, it will reduce it to ashes. And there is no science known to man that can change ashes back to the original form. Whatever fire has touched, he deals with it permanently. That is why the victory God is going to give to somebody tonight is going to be permanent. In Judges chapter 15, Judges 15, from verse 14 to 15, Judges 15, from verse 14 to 15, when they bound Samson, and they brought him bound to the enemies. And the enemies thought they have already gotten him. And the Holy Spirit came on him mightily. The fire of God came on him mightily. The ropes were burnt. And the enemies who were slow to escape, just 1,000 of them died. Now we are not pronouncing a curse on anybody. We are just simply saying what the Bible says. We are saying that from now on, any enemy who will not allow you to reach your goal because you are shielded by fire, the consuming fire will deal with them. But then the, 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 the most beautiful example had been referred to by one of my children. 
That is in Daniel chapter 3. From verse 28. Well, you can read the whole thing. Read Daniel chapter 3 from verse 1 to the end. It's a story you know very well. When they were carrying Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fairy furnace, the carriers came too close to fire, and fire finished them. When they landed in the fire, that which did not belong to them, the ropes that bound them, was consumed by fire. Just like the testimony of my son, who partook of the Holy Communion yesterday, I told them, as you take this Holy Communion, everything that is in you that should not be there will be consumed by fire. And he came to give you the testimony. The doctors have been struggling to see what is causing him pain inside his throat. Whatever it was, the consuming fire took care of it. Now, I decree to those of you who were not here yesterday, but who are here now, in the name that's above every other name, every plant my father did not plant in your body, the fire of God will consume. Daddy asked me to tell somebody. He said, your history of sorrow ends tonight. <laughs> now, you see, ah, thank you, Father. <laughs> I want to say amen to this one. <laughs> The Bible says there's someone here. It said, long before you die, your glory will be manifest in your children. Mm. Daddy asked me to tell someone. Ask me to tell you to relax. He said, from now, anyone who messes with any of your children will die. <laughs> I think God is talking because children um, they are his favorites the Lord asked me to tell someone here he said one day when your ch children begin to shine people will begin to say are these not the children of so and so So, see, what happened in Daniel chapter 3 is this. You see, I, I had to jump because I want to end quickly. God can shield by a skin of an animal. He can shield by the blood. He can shield by the word. He can shield by his name, and he can shield by angels. Well, if you read Daniel chapter 6, you know when they threw Daniel into the den of lions, uh, an angel came and shot the mouth of lions. When you read Acts of the Apostles chapter 12, the night before they were to kill uh, um, Peter and Niger came and took him away. By the time the enemies arrived, they discovered that the board had flown. 
But you see, there are occasions when God cannot even send an angel. So he comes himself to show that fire passes fire. That there is a fire that can over that can swallow the fairy furnace. If there's any of you that is already in fire, in the name that's above every other name, you are coming out of that fire for promotion. But then, let me round up. How do we get our children to be absolutely shielded? Shielded from sickness, shielded from failure in examinations, and I thank God for <laughs> I thank God for the testimony of that young man, the lecturer who said you are not going to pass. I will see to you you don't pass. <laughs> the Almighty God uh, removed him. Every mountain before my children shall be moved tonight. There is a God who answers by fire. So that God expects you, the parents, to pray for your children. When you pray to him on behalf of your children, he will answer you. There are several examples in the Bible. When people came to God and said, ah, my daughter is grievously vexed of the devil. Come and help me. And Jesus Christ said, don't worry yourself. That case is done. Uh, uh, what you call this fellow? Jairus said, Lord, please come. My daughter is about to die. I'll come quickly before she dies. The Lord said, don't worry yourself. We'll take care of that. And so on and so forth. So God expects you parents to pray for your children. And as you pray, it will answer you by fire. You see, because he had always said that uh, the reason you don't get results is because you fail to pray. So we parents in particular, we are the one who will do a lot of prayers tonight. You, you are going to cry unto him. You're going to say, well, it is written in your word, according to Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18, that uh, as for me and the children that God had given unto me, we had for signs and wonders, eh, Lord God Almighty, shield me, by fire, shield my children by fire. Let my neighbors come to me one of these days and say, wait a minute, how come your children are never sick? How come your children never fail in school? How come your children are always shining? And so I will have an opportunity to tell them, I've told you, come to Jesus Christ, you see, as soon as I gave my life to Jesus Christ, myself and my children became signs and wonders. But then you see, I have an assignment. In addition to praying for them, the Bible made it abundantly clear that you have a duty to train up these children in the way they should go so that when they grow old they won't be able to depart from it proverbs chapter 22 verse 6 proverbs 22 verse 6 he said train up your child in the way he should go so that when the child grows the child will not be able to depart from it so you have a duty of course how can you train a child in the way of the Lord if you yourself don't know the Lord? I remember an occasion some children were gathered and uh, 
Somebody was asking one child after the other to sing a chorus. And then they got to the children of a particular woman. First one, give us a chorus. No answer. Ah. Second one, no answer. Ah. Third one, no answer. Why? Because Mama has helped her. She, she can't even sing a chorus. Teach your children, train them while they are still young. And please remember there's something very peculiar about children. They remember more what they see than what they hear. You need to find that out to be the truth. The children watch you at home. They see your actions. So if you are saying something and you are doing the opposite, that opposite which you are doing, that's what they will copy. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that all our homes will become homes of the living God. So let me give you an opportunity, those of you who are parents and those of you who are children who are old enough to understand what I'm talking about. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, please come. But make sure if you come with children, if you are coming forward to surrender your life to Jesus, bring your children with you. Because you might not be able to locate your seat when you are going back. So if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ so that you become a member of the family of the Most High God, come now. Come very quickly. And we will pray. The blood of Jesus Christ will wipe away your sins. And as soon as your sins are, are gone, you will have free access to the Almighty God. So if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, you want His blood to wash away your sins, come now. The Lord is calling you. I'm going to count from 1 to 12, because I know some of you will be coming from a very long distance. So come. Come and surrender your life to Jesus. Let his blood wash away your sins so that your prayers will no longer be hindered, so that you will be able to get direct access to the Almighty God. I'm counting now. One. Two. Three. As soon as you are old enough to know how to lie, you are old enough to be saved. So you better come and give your life to Jesus Christ if you have not done so before. Four. Five. Thank you, those of you who are clapping. Your hands will never wither. Six. Seven. Eight.
nine. Eleven. If you are still coming, just keep coming, keep coming. I know you are coming from a very far distance, so keep coming, keep coming. But those of you already in front, and those of you already on the way, cry to the Almighty God and say, Please, Lord, save my soul. Let your blood wash away my sins. I want to be a member of the family of God. Please, Lord, I will serve you from now on. Just have mercy of me. Save my soul. Save my soul. And please let the rest of us stretch our hands to these people and intercede for them. And pray that the one who saved our own souls will save their own souls also. That the blood of Jesus will wash away their sins and will give them a brand new beginning. That he will receive them into the family of God. That he will write their names in the book of life. Please pray for them. And those of you on the way, keep coming, keep coming. Just make sure you get here before I finish praying. Keep coming, keep coming. You're not late yet, I have not yet said 12, so keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming, God bless you, keep coming. Thank you, Father. Just keep coming. You've traveled a long distance, so don't stop now. Just keep coming. Thank you, Father. Yes, keep coming. I can see you. So you keep, just keep coming. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. My Father, my God, I want to thank you for your word. And I want to thank you for all these people who have come forward to surrender their lives to you. Please, Lord, receive them. Have mercy on them. Let your blood wipe away their sins. Save their souls, O oh Lord. Receive them into the family of God and write their names in the book of life. And Father, I pray that from now, any time they cry unto you, please answer them by fire. And don't let them ever go back into the world. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, for those of you who have come forward, let me hear you shout a big hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I want to rejoice with you, because from now on, by the grace of God, I'll be praying for you. So I need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. The counselors will help me collect the information I need, and then pass it on to me, and I promise you I'll be praying.
We will wait for you until the counselors has finished with you before we proceed further. God bless you. Congratulations. Now, we may want to write down our prayer points now. Um, prayer point number one, of course, is thanksgiving to the Almighty God for giving us these children and for looking after them thus far. That will be prayer point number one. And if your own children are not among, your own thanksgiving will be an act of faith, thanking God that uh, it's already settled by this time next year, your children will be here. Then prayer point number two, you will cry to the Almighty God, please don't let me ever be ashamed. Don't let me ever be ashamed. Prayer point number three is, Father, cover my entire family in your blood. so that death will stay away from us. Cover us in your blood, so that death will stay away from all of us. The next prayer point will be, Father, send your word to me. again and again to shield me from all forms of destructions. Send your word to me to shield me from all forms of destruction. In the next prayer point, you will say, Father, myself and my children, we run into your name for cover. That name that is a strong tower. My children and I will run into that name. Keep us safe. There. And then, Father, shield me and all mine by fire. Shield me and all mine by fire. After that, you can then add your own special prayer. Now, if you are coming to the altar, make sure you don't leave your children behind. The altar is open, and you can go ahead and cry to the Almighty God. Thank Him. Cry unto him that you will not be put to shame, that he will cover you and your entire family by his blood, that he will speak to you again and again to shield you from every form of destruction. That you and your families are running into his name now. 
so that you can be saved. Cry unto him that he will shield you, shield your children by fire. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The Lord will grant your request. He will cover your nakedness. For the rest of your life, you will never know shame. He will cover you in his blood. When the angel of death is passing by, he will leave you alone. Death will stay from your family. The word of God will bring you healings. It will bring you deliverance. The name of Jesus Christ will take care of you. He will surround you with a wall of fire. No evil will come near you. He shall be well with you. He shall be well with your children. He shall be well with your families. He shall be well with your business. He shall be well with your churches. God will answer your prayer by fire. And you too, you will shine for God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.